uh, FFG put out for print and play. Um, they've been on the site for a while now, so everybody's got them added to their account. Um, so if you just go to create a new game and select deck, you'll see those at the bottom. Uh, so that's what they are. A lot of fun playing with those. Right, there's the match. Here. Uh, so, yes, uh, you're in, I'm in, ready to go. Uh, Mortivast, did, did you say I made the timer bot? I did indeed make the timer bot, yes. Um, I should probably put a command for it. Let's uh, do that now. Got a uh, feat with Dare. Oh my goodness. Umlauts and everything. Dare, um, Ice Koenig. Base. Oh my, wow. I apologize to any international or anybody who knows. Um, Assuming this is German, that I'm butchering this. Uh, so this is Philippe's deck. And then slogan is Tasker of Easthood Domicile. A Maverick in Information Exchange and Sorry, which is pretty fun. Pretty fun. I like that, actually. Let's see. All right, we've got Logan's going first, playing Logos Plant. Oh no, excuse me, that was uh, Philippe. Philippe playing Logos Plant uh, for their first turn. Information Officer Gray for Slogan's first turn, King Can's Blaster. And, and that's it for Slogan's first turn. Yep, see, I, I recognize uh, I recognize Joe Philippe's name because I see him basically playing in every tournament that is run on TCO. <laughs> He's in all of them, it seems. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, he is. He is. He is prolific as far as tournament participation is. Very good, very good. And at Raider Gleam, a Tricerian Legionary warding itself and an Imperial Scutum. Uh, glancing at the list, there is a tribute in there, so that could be a lovely setup for a tribute later. But there's a lateral shift as well, so this is a uh, little Eddie's. This is going to be. This is going to be a high-powered match, I think. Be a high-powered match. Logan's turn two, selecting their house. They only played uh, two cards. They may have had a 2 2 2 hand because they chose to just do Information Officer Gray and King Can's Blaster. Um, or just uh, three, maybe three cards in a different house that wasn't as good. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they do this turn as they select their house. Move forward. Obviously, they've got some options here. Information Officer Gray could, of course, archive some extra things if they go Star Alliance, which they have now done. Because they do have an Eddie. That was set up nicely for the Eddie later. If you're putting cards in the archives, you don't think you would need to pull out. So, keeping with Information Officer Gray, taking out that Logos plant, which is a good idea because both players have Logos in this match. Logos plant, uh, a great pick for, for uh, games like this where you, a lot of people will bring Logos. Yes. Revealed yes. Safety. Yeah. Gives uh, a downside to the uh, the eddy proliferation. Yes, indeed. Uh, then a city state interest going should be getting shown and going into that archives. So uh, we know that the archives is a six temper tyrannosaurus and a city state interest. Very interesting. And Vandal's just messaging me, uh, wondering why they didn't have a game, and uh, I just informed them that they have the buy, and they just said that that's the, their first win of the day. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, Philippe no. with Raider Galim reaping, Tricerian Legionary taking out Grey. Uh, Slogans is another name I recognize, because I believe they are part of the uh, Manchester team, whose name I can't remember right now. Actually, I should know because that's Mavericks. kind of my home team. There they are. There, that's the one. Couldn't think of. I knew it was an M, but couldn't think Manchester of Manchester Mavericks. Yeah, yeah. That's my local snazzy team. logo on everything. Yeah, a couple of logos cards out for slogans. Oh. Philippe with information exchange. Two Eddies. Double Eddie. Both in taunt. And then a mimic gel to copy the Tricerian Legionary awarding uh, awarding the original Tricerian Legionary. So that is that is a nice setup, I have to say. That is a nice setup. Uh, and Sigil of the Brotherhood, thank you for correcting my misinformation. Slogans is actually with the London Urchins. Uh, ah, slogans is with the London Urchins. That makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure why I confused that. I know slogans because he uh, he helps out on the uh, on the site with various things, reporting issues and things like that. 
slogans of the London urchins. Now, uh, Six Emperor Tyrannosaurus. So, destroying the Mimic Gel Tricerian Legionary. Primus Ungus Senator Shrix, exalting the Shrix. Prefectus Ludo. Information exchange to steal two. That is a turn. Up to six amber. Of course, those keys are costing ten because of the Eddie 4 by 4 city-state interest. Putting, and then a Chant of Hubris, moving another one over to Primus Ungus, which is giving all the other friendly creatures plus two power for each amber on Primus Ungus. So everybody's getting getting big. Yeah, straight up to seven amber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not quite a check, because Philippe's got that great Eddie legionary set up. Ooh, lateral shift. Lateral shift to look at his opponent's hand and play a card from it. Nice. I do um, was uh, I think it was good for the the power balance of the game, but it was funny seeing um, not seeing as many of the anomalies as I thought I would see in high level well worlds collide play, like ghost form and lateral shift. So it's exciting to see a lateral shift in the deck. Uh, I thought people would maybe find more of those decks, but um. Yeah, there's not many of them, and and, and and the the impression I get is that they've been relatively underwhelming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lateral shift is obviously very good, ghost form very good, um, but I just haven't seen any decks people are dominating with that. Uh, uh, you know, that are these you know archetypal strong worlds collide deck that also have are like made even better by by these things. Except for maybe, of course, Philippe's deck here. So yeah. Oh, a lateral shift to play a stealth mode is probably one of the best ways you could <laughs> lateral shift. <laughs> nice. Followed by a stomp, uh, killing... Oh, they, they he killed the Primus Ungus here, somehow. Tracerian Legionary. Yeah, okay. And played a Raider Gleam, taking out the Primus Ungus, which is, which is good so that board doesn't get out of control. Um, key cost up to 13 just for this turn while while that Raider Gleam has its effect applied there. And Vandos wondering when the TCO Keyforge World Championship starts. Um, watch <laughs> this space? Question mark. And Sigil of the Brotherhood apparently has a two times ghost form deck that he can't wait to bring to competition. Wow. So that does sound quite nice. Oh, Sigil, that sounds awesome. Slogans with hologramophone, using the other hologramophone to ward Ludo. Great choice. Igor, reaping with Igor. Quantum finger trap, uh, swapping the taunt creature out to the end, so one of those eddies is exposed. I just have some Good move happens. there. So nine amber, still not threatening, still not threatening the key yet. With that insane key cost increase with both both of Philippe's eddies out. going logos so do you think um with the when mass mutation comes out um that we're going to see less eddy decks in competitive competitive play do you think there's an answer for them or are they still going to be strong i think i think they'll still be strong it will really depend on um because i don't i don't think there's any new archive hate right there you know there's yeah. no dasanya at common Mm -hmm. um, in, in mass mutation, and um, as long as the board removal tools are, you know, only as prevalent as they were in mass mutation, I think I think Eddie will still be strong, because um, I don't think there's anything that quite interacts with that space in a way that's going to bring bring Eddie's uh, bring Eddie's stock down. I think the only thing that will make us see less Eddie's is um, mass mute strong mass mutation decks that um, people are wanting to play and maybe finding success with it at the top level. Yeah. Um, Cause at the end of the day, if you can kill the eddies, like you know, you've, you've done their effect, but um, sometimes you just can't because you know, they get put uh, on either side of a Tricerian legionary. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and I just want to quickly say thank you to bearded archer for the follow. Much appreciated. Thank you. So another friend from uh, Harrisonburg that, Virginia, where apparently uh, a couple of our watchers uh, have all spent some time. So slogans with a thorium plasmate. Uh, lots of rearranging. Lots of rearranging Philippe's battle line here. Uh, yes. Quantum finger trap. So took out one of the eddies. 
Expose those eddies. Got one. Or, or at least try. Mm -hmm. I killed one of them. Hologramophone onto the babbling bibliophile. The Prefectus Ludo. Keeping with the Igor. So, yeah, slogans with a key. They are ahead of uh, ahead of Philippe on keys here. So they are they are doing well for uh, for Philippe having all of the power cards out and playing them uh, playing them well. Indeed, it's, it must be such a, a slog to play against when you're you're in the sort of eddy bind and you know that you can get keys, but it just costs so much. Uh, or if you've not got a way to sort of deal with them, or you can deal with one but not two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's 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 rough. Like we saw in that that first game we cast it, it was just really huge key cost that never went down. Um, even yeah. against a deck with with five board clear creature or actions, and they never saw them. There was a Simon hiding under Jar Goggle, uh, and they put the Simon next to the uh, Titan Guardian, which I like because Simon is great against Saurians and and other things. So. Uh, slogans responding with Exchange Officer Tabor. The Archons on Tabor. We play Warding Kirby and Tabor, which is great. Some strong Star Alliance house cheating is now warded. Seems solid. That is certainly. Yeah, that's a real threat. It looks like Philippe should. Yeah, Philippe forging the first key, but Slogans is well on the way to their next key, so. A bit uh tea of wards on the other side of the table so um, this is certainly going to be a good a good match i think hopefully philippe can uh put the table back in his favor simon because of skirmish and then the fight effect happening after the skirmish happens just burns right through that ward and gets rid of that light of the archon so simon an absolute amazing tool doing exactly what it should do there And Chago played Kaimor Eclipse to shuffle a couple things back into decks. Babbling Bibliophile got its war token removed. Trust no one to steal one. Oh, nice. uh, good, good board management there by Philippe. And uh, Philippe's deck, just for a bit of sort of TCO insider chat, um, t um, Philippe's deck has two of the most annoying cards in it, Jar Goggle and the, the most annoying card, which is Mimic Gel. Mimic Gel is a really difficult oh. card. Yes. A friend who started to play locally who opened a double Mimic Gel deck and couldn't really play it on TCO because as soon as he played the, the second one... Oh, but it would uh, the game would crash whenever he would play the second Mimic Gel. Yeah, and I, I think just still, imagine... we still have that book today, I think. Uh, it's still not been fixed. <laughs> It's Imagine one. it's just an absolute pain, which is, it's not the worst because it's it's it only hurts decks with um, two of the same rare card. So uh, yeah. Slogan's having quite the untamed turn here, playing an eddy, driving key costs up just to seven. Is their babbling bibliophile, which is always feeling good when you get to do that. Remote access to a, to hit the quantum finger trap to swap Simon and Titan Guardian. But more Solid turn and on the check. Solid, solid turn is on check for eight. So Philippe able to manage the board, but then Slogans just kind of sprints further ahead here. Raider Gleam ex uh, making key cost up to 11. So not going to forge that key. And getting a bunch of dinos out. Three Prefectus Ludos. Wow. In the, same, is, turn. Um, the same turn. That's all of the Prefectus Ludos in Philippe's deck. Uh, <laughs> Unless nice. there's like a situational or a special board clear here, like um, Quintrino Flux, which I did not. Yeah, no Quintrino Flux. Um, that's that's uh, Philippe should be pretty safe to exalt to his heart's content for a while. Slogans not forging, having to pick how to deal with here. The Eddie is not protected by Taunt. Um, yeah, I love making use of babbling bibliophile when when an opponent has not taken it out. It's easy to take out, but man, when that thing lives, it's uh, it's nice. What's great is if you're if you're not drawing Logos cards, you're setting up a much you're setting up an even bigger future turn. So it's um, 
Just with uh, two cards instead of one or anything. It's, it, it gets nice. Uh, showing off my lack of game knowledge again. Um, trying to think of the, the Logos card that lets you reap and then draw for every other Logos card in play. Professor... Well, Professor Skin, is it? Yeah, there a Two you go. power from uh, Age of Ascension. Yeah. Um, I had some fun with him in a few... Uh, in a few local games when uh, your opponent doesn't really know what it does and doesn't get rid of it as soon as you put it down oh yeah it it, it can it can win you a game it's not dealt with the so slogan's reaping up to 11 and taking that eddie out um taking that eddie out so they have 11 amber keys cost a six back down now Worded the daughter where did the daughter? It looks like Philippe playing Manchego, not getting the steal off of that. Simon fought Eddie, popped it back to hand, or top to the top of the deck, excuse me. Jay Vinda, Hawk, destroying Quantum Finger Trap. Ronnie Risk Clock stealing two. Ronnie Risk Clock stealing two. Ooh, a double Ronnie turn. Dusk Runner. Dusk Runner onto Prefectus Ludo. Oof. Double Ronnie. That is that is harsh. That's rough. Vince Gill forged that key for six. I feel like the, uh, the scroll bar might be coming out soon. <laughs> uh, indeed indeed yeah double runny wrist clocks that'll help you catch up that'll really help you catch up so great move by Philippe there and, and obviously a brilliant combo with Eddie uh, your opponent having to get all that amber and then you can just go yep yeah, I'll have uh, four of it thanks uh, indeed indeed Slogans uh, taking a while even just to think before just uh, clicking on the, the key selection there. <laughs> selection. See what Which they what they have? do. They've got wards galore and plenty of reaping in a logos. Uh, so we'll see what they have. Uh, speaking of Sutterkin boots, I see uh, Bearded Archer's got a special one. I have um, uh, opened one for the, the U.S. Grand Championships in Arlington, Virginia that had three Sutterkins and a Duskwitch and was otherwise a terrible deck. Um, nice. And I won won two games out of four that I played with it. Uh, I won two games out of four that I played with it by opening with a Duskwitch. They didn't kill the Duskwitch, and then I just managed to get all of my Sutterkins within the next turn, coming in ready, reaping drawing my entire deck so it was a it's a it's a hilarious nice. high roll deck for nice. sure that, that is uh that's a combo you're not going to get to do very often but when you do oh <laughs> you do it's fun deep into a logos turn here reaping with the bibliophile playing an eddy to archive reaping with both igors reaping with daughter Boarding. Oh, and it looks like they're just one amber short of threatening the final key here. Unless, yep, yeah, one amber short. Uh, Philippe will forge a second key for eight, so great taxing with the Eddy air. With the double hologramophone just getting to ward absolutely everything. Philippe saying, <laughs> Philippe saying, nope, cut that in half, hawking that hologramophone. Mm -hmm. Chago fights Bibliophile. Chago, oh, it looks like I mean, Chago returned to deck. Okay, so they're they're hoping for that steal there. They're playing efficiently, Jay Vinda. Uh, stealing one off of the killing of the uh, babbling bibliophile with the Vinda reap there um, and getting to check with various other reaps and yeah. bounce that Eddie back. I bounce that Eddie to um, the top of the deck. Yeah, so it's not even it's not even in Slogan's hand. in slogan's hand but can he get it back does he have something uh... star alliance so it back. Mm. see what answers are here in star alliance engineer walls really nothing to pick up from the, from the discard I mean onto Shrix I like that which isn't awarded, but it uh, says, hey, you've got to kill this. So Kinscan's Blaster gets attached. 
That's uh, that's one of those blaster effects. I always forget that uh, you can you can archive a creature in play when Kincaid's blaster gets attached to him, and you could do it to uh, your opponent. Ah, yes, and that and that's uh, something that a lot of people say about uh, playing on something like TCO is that because it handles all of this stuff for you, you you tend to forget stuff in person. Oh, hmm. I'd re so much rather would have the way to play, <laughs> you know, especially during um, this time of of, of a pandemic. But for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm obviously biased because I run the thing, but uh, yeah, there's no substitute for playing in person. Uh, what if I saying the only deck he's beaten <laughs> Philip <laughs> with is. <laughs> Four guy which has three Sotakins and a Replicator. <laughs> Get generate a hundred amber. Wow. That looks like Philippe going up to a bunch of amber. I think that was a tribute play. Tribute, yeah. Can't. Uh, yeah, tribute. Yep. You did on to, on to the Tricerian Legionary, which was what we were hypothesizing <laughs> when he did that in the first two turns. And then a steal with the Ludo as well. Uh, and yeah, Ludo, all the Ludos preventing that Amber from coming back to Slogans. So Slogans in a tough spot here, waiting to pick a house. Their keys cost nine, I believe. Yeah, played Raider. Yep. They're costing nine this turn. And they would need a pretty intense way to keep, keep Philippe off here. Redrawn that Eddie, so that we'll archive and take key cost up to nine. Not quite, quite enough. Off. I'll see if he has another way to archive. Okay, he warded an Igor, which is fascinating. Okay, well that was just he was just playing it out. So there we go. Yeah. Good, good games, good games all around. Yeah, that was a that was a good one. That was coming down to the wire here. Philippe managed to. Uh, I think I think um, if slogans had in some somewhere prioritized to take out you know, to take out that Scudum Tricerian Legionary, that was that was Philippe's exit button the whole time. That was his that was his. This is a, this is how I'm going to close it out, and he he had that out for the the whole time. You called it. Oh. Uh, thank you right. very much to the trickster for the follow and Jupiter says TCO gets you familiarity in person makes you refined I, I would I would agree with that. that that seems fair I agree with that too yeah I would I would certainly be um, I don't think TCO has like instilled any bad habits that are you know truly bad in me what it has done is let me actually practice more than I would <laughs> you know in person especially these days um Playing in a like weekly league with um, some of the Archons of Atlanta has been a way to actually scratch the itch. Yeah, sure. Days. I found uh, so the reason I made the, the Game of Thrones site in the first place is I couldn't find people uh, in my local area to play with. So uh, I, I just, and, and I was in a, mm. a, a time where I was in between jobs, um, so I had very little to do, and I needed to learn uh, you know a couple of new technologies to keep my skills sharp and, and all that good stuff. So I thought, why not? Why not make a, a a huge card game website? That can't be that difficult, right? Um, so yeah, I, I <laughs> took the time to make it. It eventually got more and more people helping, and then making it more refined. Um, but um, kind of forgot where I was going with this now. But yeah, what what I found is that when I was playing online, I was doing quite well. But then I'd go to play in person or a tournament, and and I not do as well and it would be I, I wouldn't really understand that and also uh with the game of thrones being a sort of deck building game uh the the meta uh was substantially different mm. between being online and in person so you'd you'd gear up to, sure, to, to, sure. to, to the online meta you, you'd build your deck in a certain way and then you'd go and find that it did absolutely rubbish you get what 32 people brought to a lo local tournament <laughs> oh indeed uh, right, so this looks like we've still got Three, some games yeah. going. I'm sure we'd have 10 minutes left on the round. Yeah. Anyone here? So you're saying Portuguese power is uh, is Philippe from Portugal? I am 
hilariously, actually, I, well, not hilariously, I'm a quarter Portuguese, um, which is uh, my grandmother came over from Portugal from the Azores, uh, and I just, a great family situation on my mom's side there, so I have very little connection to the, the country or the culture, unfortunately. Uh, so I've just jumped into a game right. with Hex Lights and Faker. Nice. Wow, man, we have we have some major Portuguese representation happening here. Jupiter, Jupiter is half. Uh, Batnu is is from the Azores, so we. Um, wow. Uh, I mean, I don't know how related people are from the Azores, but that's where my grandma's from. So, it's awesome. Cool. And and I like to visit Portugal because it's a nice place. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, apparently we've we've come at the turning point. Hexlight uh, being down two keys to to zero um, says that, or thinks that it's uh, it's all going to turn around. However, given that Faker Faker has just gone for check for the third key, uh, that could be a bit optimistic. Making the match here. To uh, to go express express my Portuguese heritage in Discord. Apparently, Hexlice is listening in because he says that's not what he meant. <laughs> oh, you had the advantage. I see. I got it. <laughs> uh, uh, Philippe saying, "That's where I get my." Uh, the Portuguese side of me is where I get my keyboard skills. Well, let's let's go with that. Let's go with okay. that. Okay, fair enough. All right. Let's see. Hexalite. Oh man. Oh goodness. Yeah, I hadn't even looked at keys yet. <laughs> As that is a. Uh... Remembering all the times I've been there. Like, uh, let's see. So Chief Garcia getting that key cost up. Uh, if a player concedes at one to one keys, what do I report? Um, that is a good question. I'd say three to one. Go with the win at the current state, I guess. Faker at check with 10 after a stealth mode turn, it looks like. Hornets touch, they purge the knowledge as power. Oof, yeah, and a Kirby out. So that's looking. So yeah, hex lights can get the, uh, the key cost up a bit, but probably not enough. I don't see another Garcia in there. Hexlight's thinking. They've got four archives. I'm not seeing an Eddie 4x4. Four four. I'm just looking at what other... Uh, they would need some, you know, major swing. There it is, the concession. Yep. There they would have needed some major swing. Uh, gamper control there, but that is, that is a concession. There we go. Um, okay, let's see where we're up to now. We have five minutes left on the round, assuming everybody started on time. So we should be getting wrapped up pretty quickly. Indeed. Just waiting Indeed. for Challenge to uh, sort itself out and load the results. The uh, discussion channel in the uh, Discord has now turned into... Um, uh, everyone who's at least loosely associated with Portugal, <laughs> counting myself as a loop one there. Everybody just hanging out and talking about how our, our various our various degrees of being Portuguese, mine being pretty minimal, but um, always uh, 
logical being a priority for me to go visit, especially the Azores, um, my grandmother's side, just to see just to see where I'm from. Uh, a whole lot of connection to that side of the family. So I didn't really get to dive in. Yeah, with with Portugal being quite close to the UK and relatively inexpensive to uh, to get to and, and visit, uh, it tends to be quite a popular holiday destination. So uh, we've been at least a couple of times. It's a very nice place. Very nice. warm. Vando says, uh, "I worked eleven weeks on uh, Madeira. Did it count?" Um, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm Portuguese <laughs> enough to make that call. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta draw the line somewhere. Oh, that might be that might fall short of the line, I'm afraid. And uh, Arctic Express, who I'm assuming is uh, Hexlight, says uh, it's a shame he's been wanting us to spectate his game, and we show up at his crushing defeat. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, our apologies there. Um, apologies there. I've just realised that you can get the game links from Challenge as well. So if you look at the parent, you can get the the paperclip. So, just in case you wanted a oh, fantastic. Short, shortcut, I just realized that. They're, they're, they're visible to anybody. Uh, so, we've got three games left, it seems. We've got uh, Scrowner and Kelly is unique, Finchmaster and Woodrow S, and we have uh, Esquire, JJR, and Display Name. Do we have any preference? Uh, let's see. So, yeah, let's go over to. Scr oh, well, no, that one just finished. Um, let's, uh, let's check in on. Um... Let's do display name. Okay. If I... uh... Oh, boom! Yeah, it took me right in. The spectator, brilliant. There you go. Three minutes left here. An evil eye played on. So display name is at check. An evil eye. He's up Esquire's key cost. Uh, which is good because they do have a key charge, which is not in the discard pile. Don't have many creatures out. There's a Fangtooth Cavern. We'll see what sort of Amber Control Squire has here. Crowner will be dropping. Yep, yeah, just got that one. I'm just doing that now. Uh, Scrowner is gone. Uh, that's where it's quite a pumping up key. People are letting oh, me know in good time, so it's good. Esquire using Raider Galeem to bump up that key cost. It looks like this is now the last game Playing for this round. Keeping with Odak. Playing the Shrix. Oh, and there's a tribute. Tribute putting two onto Odak. Not exalting to pull more, but just enough to uh, just enough to pull. Fangtooth destroys Rock Grub. Rock Grub, excuse me. Quite enough. I wonder if they could have threatened the key if they had reaped a legionary and then exalted to to Amber off the tribute and leave that um place. Yeah, I'm afraid I, I know this I game. Was, Let's uh, see. I was doing admin stuff, so I missed uh, missed that turn. Oh no, no worries. They're down to um, it is down to the wire with just Amber control and who runs out of Amber control first. Really, is gonna decide it. Display name with Chant of Hubris. Uh, moving from Thero over to Odak. Dang, sorry about that. Drawing Raider Goldeem and giving Esquire an Amber. Probably have to get some Amber control from hand or fight with Thero. Thero survive. Ah. Play name realizing realizing uh, that might have been a misplay there because that puts Esquire up to six. The display name will be at check, like they're threatening. They don't have to do anything else to threaten the key because they got rid of that raider. And if Thero fights 
Uh, of course, he was on five, and then Darian sorry, sorry about that, gave him another one. Yeah. He, he can capture one back with Fighting Thero into Tricerian Legionary because it will survive just barely. Hmm. But it's probably not and what he would have the chosen to do. Cavern. Yeah, yeah. Ah, and there's time. There's time. Capturing one. Um, just for anybody watching uh, who's also participating in the tournament, uh, I think we're going to have a five-minute break at the end of this, just uh, just so I can get a drink and... Uh, yeah, it looks like a couple of other people seem to uh, to want it as well. So that's what we'll do. So as soon as this game's over, I will go to a BRB screen and uh, we'll have five minutes. Ooh. The Esquire leaning into that advantage you get as that uh, that player, the second player after it goes to time. Mab the Mad goes talk. Oh, a key charge. Oh, and a key charge. Okay, so winning, goes. winning on the key charge. So we don't even have to nice. get into the, the you know the the tiebreaker rules there. So uh, that's good. Yep, that's clear. Feels a bit better. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. And uh, with all of that, yeah, with all of that, I don't think there was a way for display name to stop them. Yes, good, good game, good game all around. Good game all around, there, players. So, as I've just announced, uh, we're going to have a short break. Uh, we shall resume a 